Yeah, I'd like. Let some, uh... <laughs> we'll call this meeting of the Craven County Board of Commissioners regular session for Monday, May the 2nd, 2022, to order. Madam Clerk, if you will, please call the roll. Commissioner McCabe? Here. Commissioner Mitchell? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Liner? Here. Commissioner Mark? Vice Chairman Booker? Here. Chairman Jones? Here. If you will, please let's stand together as we salute to the American flag and pledge. And also, if you will, remain standing for an invocation by the county attorney. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we honor you today in prayer and thanksgiving. We pray for our county commissioners and all who represent Craven County. Grant them peace that passes all understanding and amazing grace to sustain them when days are long and rest is short. Father, you are our refuge and fortress. You provide everything we need for life and godliness. You hear our ardent intercession and smile when we raise our voices in praise and worship. We thank you for your presence, love, and grace. It is in your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> we welcome each of you here this evening to the Craven County Board of Commissioners meeting and to those that may be viewing online, we welcome you also. This is the people's meeting and uh, I would ask for those that are in attendance, if you would, please let's make sure our cell phones are on silence or off so it would not disrupt this meeting. <coughs> we would appreciate it. Also today, before we get started, commissioners, uh, I take chairman's privilege in, um, in recognizing one of our colleagues, and that is Commissioner Beatrice Smith. I think today is her birthday. Uh, uh, it is. Miss B, we won't ask you how old you are, but happy birthday to you. Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Commissioners, uh, before you is your agenda, are there any items that you desire to add or remove from tonight's agenda? Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as is. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hear none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. The first item of business tonight is petition of citizens for agenda topics. Mr. Vice Chair, do we have anyone that has signed up? Do not. Okay. Uh, is anyone in attendance that failed to sign uh, up for the petition of citizens for agenda topics that would desire to come forward? All right. Hear none. We will move to item two, which is a public hearing for economic development, the project Blue Fin, and I'll ask Mr. Jeff Wood, our economic director, if he will to come forward. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, pursuant to state code, Craven County, um, here in county, intends to award an economic development grant in the amount of $600,000 to White River Marine Group, LLC, for the acquisition and expansion of its manufacturing facility. <clears throat> the county believes the proposed grant will stimulate and stabilize the local economy, result in the retention and further creation of a substantial number of permanent jobs in the county and result in the retention of existing and creation of new tax revenue to the county. The board's request to go into public hearing as advertised at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter to receive public input on in this matter. Okay, thank you, sir. Commissioners, do I have a motion that we open the public hearing? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we stand in uh, public hearing. Mr. Vice Chair, do we have anyone signed up? We do not. We do not. All right, uh, as we just gave the opportunity, if anyone failed to sign up for this public hearing, we give you the opportunity now to come forward. All Make right. a motion to go to public Close, hearing. Sir. Second. Okay. All right, I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we back to the board. Anything else to add, Mr. Wood? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. All right, the next item is the consent agenda. Commissioners, you have there on the consent agenda the minutes of the April 18th, 2022 regular session, tax releases and refunds. You have the garage budget amendment and the CARTS CARES Act budget amendment. Are there any consent agenda items that you desire to pull? Here, none. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Here, none. Madam Clerk, if you will, please call the roll. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? 
Yes. Commissioner Liner. Yes. Vice Chairman Booker. Yes. Chairman Jones. Yes. Thank you. Item four is the Craven Community College budget presentation. We are well honored this evening to have uh, representation from the trustees and also from the leadership. And we turn it over to Mr. Raymond Stats. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for having us here today. And I have with me our Chief Finance Officer, Mr. Jim Millard, and of course our Board Chair, uh, Mr. Whit Whitley. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'll go right to the next slide. I don't think I have a clicker. Uh, so I'll spend a few minutes going over this past year uh, and some notable infrastructure projects, and I'll speak very briefly uh, on our emergence from COVID-19, which we hope is a real trend. I'll talk a little bit about the college's enrollment trends uh, over the number of years, and then we'll look forward a little bit, first with our first uh, our five-year facilities plan and some initiatives uh, we plan that may be of interest. And then finally, I'll conclude uh, with our county budget request. Next slide. Uh, some notable infrastructure projects we've done in the last year uh, that, I'll, that I'll speak about in more detail in just a moment is something called the Dark Room Studio on our main campus. I'll talk uh, about the Bolt Center's new commercial kitchen, which is under construction, and then the projects that, that have been ongoing, uh, again, on the main campus. Next slide. So this is Dark Room Studio, a uh, podcast and video sharing uh, presence, and having that presence now has become a very, very important part of our marketing. Uh, our marketing budget is very limited. Uh, so some of the uh, heroes, as I call them, in the marketing department and in Public Radio East I took this room, uh, which even before Public Radio East was established in 1984, was a dark room for one of our photography classes. Uh, over the last 20 plus years, it's been a storage facility, and they have converted that into a first class uh, production quality studio uh, that we now have. The name, dark room, is simply because if you look very carefully in the second picture from the right, <coughs> top corner you'll see what looks like a little glowing square and that is the old dark room light that went with that room that still is in operation so we, we coined that term. Next slide. Now this is in the Bosch Advanced Factory Center uh, constructed in uh, 2008. These are the original floors on the uh, left hand side as you might imagine moving heavy equipment back and forth and lots of students uh, eventually wore the floor down until it was no longer in great shape. Uh, pretty much expected at the 14 to 15 year point, so we've resurfaced them, uh, and they were, uh, look, look as you see, they look quite nice now. Next slide. Our exciting project at the Bolt Center, uh, we are doing the upfit for our fifth building on that uh, new campus. Uh, we've had uh, an interesting time with supply chain, uh, but, but some good news, we ordered the uh, hoods last January uh, with no news for three months, and then last we're told they were shipped. And then this morning they arrived, which puts us on schedule again uh, for uh, getting our first classes in August, and we hope to have uh, a ribbon cutting in July. First three classes are already scheduled and in the books, Introduction to Hospitality, Bartending and Brewing, and Service. And last year we convened with the help of the New Bern Area Chamber of Commerce, a restaurant owner's working group will be reconvening that group uh, to begin looking at more curricula and customizing it for particular needs of our restaurant owners here in the local area. So we're real excited about this. This will be, again, the building. Um, and our, uh, just to talk a little bit about partnerships, we estimate the value of the infrastructure uh, that we put together $5.4 million. Uh, the college's capital cost was $400,000. Uh, commissioners, you have uh, dedicated uh, approximately $1.7 million over 10 years in operations and maintenance. City of New Bern has about 600,000 uh, invested, and then we have other partners such as the Economic Development Authority uh, and the uh, uh, Golden Leaf Grant. Uh, so a lot of partners to put that together. Uh, for community colleges, as you know, the uh, capital funding is, is the bane of our existence. Uh, so be able to uh, have $5 million in partners to leverage our 400,000 is a real blessing for the college. And we are currently we passed the 500 job mark here about a month or two ago, so we're very pleased. Over on the main campus, on the next slide, campus wayfinding. This may not seem like a big deal until you direct enough folks uh, to need to go where they were. Campus wayfinding was a priority on our 2008 master facilities plan. Uh, but every year since then, there have been major construction projects underway. Last year was the first year, and Mr. Millard uh, says with a smile, that he didn't have at least a million dollars worth of construction going on, and he was able to turn his attention to getting this project done. Uh, we have wayfinding on all three campuses now, much easier uh, to find buildings mm -hmm. and locations. Next slide, please. 
Uh, another one, uh, again, I'm going to point to Mr. Millar. Before he was our chief finance officer, he uh, worked in information technology, so this is near and dear to his heart. As you're well aware, the information technology threats to local governments and schools has really come of age. Uh, and so we have uh, worked very hard to stay ahead of that. And we are deploying what we call defense in layers. Uh, and the two biggest gains this past year is in a network access control system, which increases the uh, ability of our firewalls to block threats and detect threats as they come in, and if necessary, to shut the entire system down in time to prevent a threat from taking over the system. Uh, the second major defense layer is multi-factor authentication. Uh, I'm learning that your cell phone now is becoming as important as your ID because you can't do anything without getting an MFA message sent to your phone to log in. That is also true if you attempt to log into the college's system from an off-campus site. It will send a six-digit code to your phone uh, that corresponds to your account before it will let you into the system. This is extremely important for the college uh, as we continue to Upgrade our wireless capacity. We are currently sitting at 55% of our students are taking their courses in remote learning mode. That was 35% before the pandemic uh, rose as high as 90 at the peak of the pandemic. We expect uh, this to be a long-term trend for us to have a great deal of our instruction taking place remote. Uh, just to give an example, in January of 2021, <coughs> our bandwidth every day was 400 gigabits being used on our networks. That number is now 750 uh, gigabytes for an 88% gain in that time. Again, so we are very, very careful uh, about uh, what we're doing there. Uh, part of that is the North Carolina Community College System just improved a new form of instruction. Uh, we have had the traditional classroom, the distance learning, or the remote instruction. And then we had hybrid, where part of the class would be taught in person and part would be taught remote. Uh, this is simultaneous, in person and remote. We have new classrooms uh, that have been uh, renovated where we can conduct both at the same time. So half of the students might be there, half might be somewhere else. Uh, and the screens are set up so that the teacher uh, can look against the back wall and see pictures of all the students that are in remote early, and the students that are remote can see the entire classroom and the interaction is real time. Um, this, is, this is going to be very important should we find ourselves back in a COVID wave uh, where we have to cut classroom uh, capacity and only some of our students can attend. Uh, and I've lost count. We have two classes on the main campus and one in Havelock now that are set up. We have, as soon as the supply chain starts working over there, we'll have a whole lot more. <laughs> we, we have the equipment ordered. We just haven't got all installed for that. We'll have many more PDS right now. Well, it's, it's the up and coming thing. Next slide. Uh, we hope to be emerging from COVID-19. Uh, that story remains to be told. Uh, but the story for Craven Community College is for the last two weeks, two years, we have been open and safe. Our incident rate has stayed below uh, the national, state, and county levels, uh, and we've been very fortunate to uh, no uh, cluster event. Uh, but we are glad to finally be returning to some in-person events. Uh, many of you attended the 12th Annual Community Fabric Awards. It was like being home again. Uh, we had been away from the convention center for four years. And Saturday, May 14th, we will return in person for the 55th commencement. Uh, the circus tents start being erected next week, Monday. Tuesday, yes, sir. Tuesday. Uh, and we expect to have over 2,000 people on the campus uh, that day. Mm. Uh, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what's next. Uh, will we have another wave? Uh, and we're also looking forward in our planning cycles as to what is expected to be another recession. Mm. Historically, <coughs> colleges, curriculum enrollment rises dramatically during a recession and trades go down. And I'll speak a little more about that. Uh, we think we may be bucking the trend uh, coming up for a variety of reasons. So this is our enrollment trend over the last 10 years. Uh, and I'll draw your attention all the way to the bottom, which is the total 357 full-time equivalents 10 years ago, now at 3060. That's only about a 9% difference, so we've been very stable. Uh, but then the question is, why are we building facilities, which is usually the next question. And the answer is, the overall enrollment's about the same, but the nature of that enrollment has changed dramatically. Traditional liberal arts university transfer has declined precipitously in the last 10 years. Uh, fortunately, a lot of it we've made up as partners with the uh, high, uh, high schools beginning in 2015. Uh, we now have about 800 students participating, which in 2010, they were nearly zero. So that's helped, but most of the remaining enrollment has shifted to career programs, health programs, and to workforce development. Those are space-intensive and equipment-intensive programs where we have dedicated space. An example would be an English classroom over in the uh, uh, Brock Hall uh, can teach English one, one hour, next hour go to math. 
hour after that, we're teaching psychology, and the only thing we've changed is a textbook. Uh, contrast that with nursing, which requires about 2,000 square foot of nursing simulation space, or a robotics lab, which will require about 2,000 square foot of space to accommodate 10 students uh, overall. So there's a big change in the way we're doing our business. Next slide. And this kind of drives that point home. Uh, what you're seeing there, that, that big thick line, is percentage of workforce development FTE as a portion of the total college FTE. So 20 years ago, it ran about 11.5% of our total FTE, and it has been trending up ever since. Uh, this year, we set a record. It's over 21% of the overall. And those dips, the Great Recession, you see workforce development declined during a recession. Think of trades and hospitality. Uh, usually are areas that are hit hardest by our recession. So you see that dip. Uh, you see the dip from Florence and COVID. But we think if we hit another recession, we might not see the dip on this side because the trades and, and hospitality industries are currently so woefully understaffed that a recession might actually allow an opportunity to, for them to catch up, perhaps not lay off so many. Uh, but again, we don't know. We've seen a lot of things in the last four years we've never seen before. Uh, but we're beginning to make plans to pivot if we need to to handle a surge in enrollment if that becomes necessary. Next slide. So looking forward, uh, on the main campus, uh, we will be doing some uh, refurbishments on the business and industry uh, building. On the second floor, that building is about 15 years old, so beginning to do some, some normal cycl cyclical maintenance. Uh, we'll be doing, uh, in Kelso Hall, we'll be remodeling the cosmetology lab. And that assumes the barbering project, which I'll speak to in just a moment, uh, that that gets done in time in the next year. Uh, we will also be redoing uh, the welding uh, program area over in Ward Hall. Over on Havelock, we have the 20th anniversary in, on the Havelock campus next year. All of these buildings date back to that moment, so we're doing some paint, floors, uh, and, and bathroom uh, refreshments. And then, of course, every year, the roofs, the parking, and the parking lots are always a piece of uh, Mr. Millard's life. <laughs> Next slide. It's hard to believe, but we have, we have completed a strategic plan. The 2017-2022 plan will complete this year. Uh, in, our, in June, at the retreat, we'll begin planning for 23 through 28. Um, over the next year, we expect to see our nursing program continue to expand. Uh, by way of example, in 2021, last year, we graduated 44 nurses. We expect that number to be 80 in academic year wow. 24. Uh, and that is great uh, thanks to Carolina East Health Systems, who helped us with faculty costs uh, during those first couple years of growth until we get our funding uh, <coughs> on the state for those. Uh, we are starting a new uh, associate degree program in emergency medical science. We've had a workforce development program for a number of years. Uh, we'll be moving to degree. Uh, assuming all our approvals go as scheduled, in January we'll bring in our first bridge class. Those will be students that are bridging from workforce development into the curriculum side. And then in the fall of 23, we'll bring in our first full cohort of associate students. HERF funded, uh, this is federal money. Uh, this has become a running joke between Jim and I. HERF uh, funding, one of the main restrictions for HERF uh, <laughs> funds is that you may not use it for construction. So naturally, Craven Community College is doing two construction projects. Uh, it turns out there are waivers to be had for certain purposes. Uh, one of them, uh, most importantly, is for air quality within buildings. Uh, so we have been able to get approved a project to replace over 300 windows and 50 doors on the main campus. Uh, these are the old 1960s vintage single pane uh, with the latches that forward out that be replaced with traditional double-paned uh, airtight windows, which will greatly improve air quality for water buildings and allow the HVAC systems to be more efficient in what they're doing. Hopefully it'll bring our utility bill down uh, a little bit as well. Uh, uh, social distancing and spacing of students has become uh, very important in this new environment as well. Our barbering program currently shares space with cosmetology, which puts them shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip. Uh, so we got approval to move the barbering and cosmetology apart. Uh, they'll be in the same building. We'll be uh, working to get that done in the next year. And then once that's done, we'll reconfigure the cosmetology area uh, and space them out a little more. The campus windows and doors project is budgeted at $1.2 million in federal funds and barbering at $450,000 uh, in federal funds. So uh, Ms. Millard is back in business again doing major construction projects. Uh, finally, uh, we have dubbed this Volt completion. Uh, we have five buildings open on the Volt campus. There is one uh, full building left 
about 1,800 square foot, as well as uh, two garage buildings and several market stalls. Uh, so we will be working with the city of Newburgh the next year to uh, hopefully acquire that last piece. Um, and we will be focusing on heavy equipment operations, which will support the Interstate 42 project. Uh, we will be uh, starting a small business center incubator and then uh, expanding our trades programs. Uh, when we first started uh, trades in the single building at 7,500 square foot, I promised we would outgrow it. We did. Um, and, and now we're having to limit our class sizes because we can only, for example, have one construction, one plumbing. <coughs> And the demand is there to have multiple iterations of each course going on at the same time. So we'll move out uh, some of the construction projects into those market space uh, to preserve space inside for inclement weather um, and for current projects. Next slide. So this is our request for fiscal year 23. Typically, I come before you with requests in three categories, operating funds, personnel, and capital. Uh, you'll see that this year, uh, all of our requests is wrapped up in personnel. Uh, that is because of the sign of the times and a number of initiatives from uh, the state. Uh, first, uh, we were very fortunate in fiscal 22 and 23 in the state budget to get a 2.5% cost of living increase. Uh, as you know, when the state uh, mandates an increase, uh, that is rolled into our formula budget for state-funded employees, uh, but that does not include institutional or county-funded employees. Our tradition and our hope that it continues is that we're able to offer those employees uh, the same uh, benefits as their counterparts. Teasers, as the teachers, teachers, educators, retirement system, that's our retirement system. Uh, uh, the contribution rate is from 2178 to 2419. That means for a dollar we pay an employee, 24.19 goes into the retirement system. That's high. Uh, but I've worked in several different states. One of the blessings of that is North Carolina is, uh, enjoys one of the most solvent retirement systems in the entire United States. I came from Illinois, um, and they told us just don't plan to expect electric retirement. Um, I'm pleased uh, that this has been done. Again, we're formula funded for state funded employees, uh, but not for other categories. Health insurance continues to go up. Uh, that number has come from 6,300 and changed to almost 7,400 uh, for a full time employee. Uh, finally, good for our folks, a $15 per hour rate for all state-funded employees. Uh, we have 19 county employees that are under that number right now with an average of $13.49. We would like to get them up to that $15 minimum. <coughs> your primary your custodial staff, your maintenance staff, uh, and security. Our total ask for personnel is $203,000, and because of the size of that ask, we have, uh, Jim has worked hard with his team to make sure we can live with it. So our total ask uh, this year is $4.804125 million. I'm ready for questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions for Dr. Stats? Any questions? Commissioner Liner? All right. I see folks studying, but I don't see no hear no questions. So... Uh, <laughs> We thank you for your presentation it. and thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, next we have the Board of Education budget presentation, uh, Dr. Miller. And we do also this evening uh, want to recognize, I think we have one Board of Education member with us, Ms. Kelly Muse, welcome. And mm -hmm. I know you'll introduce your staff. And we also have um, the finance officer, Denise Altman, and several cabinet members here. Um, with me tonight. So Welcome. Thank you so much for allowing us to present. Um, that was a great segue. You're going to hear much of the same about employee um, cost and, and minimum $15 an hour raises. Same applies to us. Um, I'd like to start out tonight by reminding everyone of our vision and mission. Several years ago, next slide, um, the community stakeholders met and developed a vision, and you'll see the words imagine and empower, create, innovation, and successful life. You'll see many other words that illustrate the dreams we all have for the students in Craven County. Tonight I share with you how we're starting to realize that vision for our students, and I will admit we still have work to do, but I'm proud of our school system and the opportunities we offer our students to prepare them for college, career, and life in our community. Next slide. First, I'd like to start off with celebrations. First, in the area of performance, 
Eighty percent in the most difficult year I believe we've ever had in education, 80 percent of our schools met or exceeded growth. Ten schools exceeded growth and ten met growth. Many of these schools were our low performing schools and they had a great year. Our district graduation rate of 85.4 percent, even early college, early college East and Havelock High School were all above the state average for graduation. The ACT work keys assessments are the cornerstone of the workforce readiness for CTE concentrators and the assessment measures foundational skills that show that our students are ready for work. Silver certification or higher in Craven County Schools, 68.8% of our students earn that certification, which is above the state average of 63.4. That means they met silver, gold, or platinum standards. We had industry certifications earned by our students. 671 industry certifications were earned. And as of March of this year, we already have 469, so we anticipate uh, improving that 671 from last year. Craven Early College, Early College East, and Newbern High School were all above the state average in ACT scores of 17 or higher, which meets the standards for the UNC system of college enrollment. Next slide. I would also like to celebrate tonight our partnerships. Craven County Schools was recognized for their kindness day in the Wall Street Journal. This was a time students and staff participated in community service. Together Rising sent $2,000, $200,000 worth of gift cards for each Craven County School employee. They only selected six school districts across the nation and only one in North Carolina and Craven County Schools was the one they selected. Most recently, we had our Farm to Table event, the only district in the state of North Carolina, and I see Mr. Vike smiling because he, he got to hear about some of that, I, I think. Um, we were the only district that every school had participants in this. This was a time when we celebrated North Carolina locally grown produce and products, and everything on our menus were from farms in North Carolina. Again, the only North Carolina school district that had all schools participate. We had special guests, included elective officials and the North Carolina Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxler. And most recently, with my colleague, we had um, the cow event at Craven Community College, and that stands for Rears on Wheels. We had 30 businesses that were in the parking lot of Craven Community College, and they uh, helped engage our fifth grade students, 900 to be exact, to prepare them for future careers that they can have right here in our own county. Next slide. We also have um, other awards to celebrate. Craven County Schools received the Purple Star Award for every school in our district. For the first time, we received the State Superintendent's Purple Star District Award. That means that every school in Craven County Schools is a military-friendly school. We were only one of 10 districts in the state to receive that award. Last year, scholarship dollars in the amount of $15.5 million was awarded to our students. Grover C. Middle School students, Odyssey of the Mind team, are the state champions and will be representing Craven County Schools on the national level. Nardi Rutan, one of our teachers, math teachers at Creekside, is one of the three finalists for the 2022 Presidential Awards for Excellence in Mathematics. And students are being recognized by winning state and national awards. Many will be celebrated at the May Board of Education meeting. Next slide. Grants. We have grants for nursing support. We receive funding through the health department and in collaboration with them to support nursing in our schools. The Department of Juvenile Justice School Safety. We're replacing doors and entries so our schools will be safe and secure. North Carolina Education Corps, for the first time ever, we were one of the ones selected to be a district that will provide literacy trained tutors through Education Corps to work in our neediest schools. And then of course DARE, and we're all familiar with the K-12 prevention program through the uh, Craven County Sheriff's Office. We have 10 schools in Craven County in the elementary level participating in DARE. Next year we hope to have all of our schools participate. And finally, a strong partner, Partners in Education, put directly in our classrooms over $400,000 this year. Next, celebrations for our district and schools. We opened Craven Virtual Academy. 
it's a virtual academy where 100% of our stu students in the class are taught virtually. We have 163 students enrolled in grades three through 12 and 11 full-time teachers. We also celebrate, and it was very important this year, that we have a nurse in every school, a school resource officer in every school. We reduced our teacher turnover from 17.3 to 16.2. The state average is about 12%, so we have some work to do there. Newburn High School applied and has been visited to be a national demonstration site for AVID. Vanceboro Farm Life has applied and been visited to be a national lighthouse status school regarding Leader and Me. And we also have been recognized for the nurses' work during COVID as a model district by the state. But there are challenges. Of course, as you've already heard, COVID was a challenge. Although we kept our schools open the entire time, not all districts around us were able to do that. We remained open all of this year. The other challenge is we've been held harmless for our ADM, and that will end this year. So we will actually have to use the ADM which will take us from 13,205 to 12,644, a decrease of 561 students, which will impact our state funding. Teacher recruitment and retention still are a challenge. University education programs continue to see declined enrollment, especially in the high needs areas of math, science, and special education. And as you've already heard, we have a workforce shortage. If you've been anywhere at all, you'll see the signs help wanted. We too, as a school system, have areas that we, we continue to, to um, have a challenge in recruiting and, and staffing. Finally, as many of you have already heard, our free meals provided by the USDA ends in June 2022. We continue to push for an extension because we know children learn best when their basic needs are met. Next slide, I would like to tell you how we've been stewards, good stewards of the funding we have received. We've used ESSER funding to make capital improvements across the district. Go Energies. We were smart enough, I can't take credit for this, but my transportation folks came to project that gas prices were going to go up. So we entered into a contract. And you're going to be jealous to know we only pay a little bit over $2 a gallon for gas. That has saved us lots of money by enter entering in that contract early so we could keep our gas prices stable. As you're aware, we apply for every grant funding source available. We never turn a dollar down. We partner with Golden Leaf and Craven County to install generators in our school sites, and we sold our old iPads to offset the purchase of new laptops for our instructional staff. So now I, I'm going to ask Ms. Altman to come up, and she's going to talk with you about our local current expense budget request. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so you all have this lovely little booklet here. When you can't sleep, you're welcome to page through it and look at all the line item expenses and revenue. Um, but tonight, I want to present to you a summary of our local current expense and capital outlay budget request. On the first slide is some general considerations that you need to be aware of um, that we used in preparation uh, of our budget. And some of it you've heard in the Craven Community College presentation. You know, the state passed the budget in November 2021, and there were several salary and benefit increases in that budget. So we are looking at an increased um, benefit rate of 24.19% for retirement and $7,397 per employee for health coverage. We also have the increased non-certified hourly staff. The rates are going up from a minimum of $13 an hour this year to $15 an hour next year, and they get the greater of $15 an hour or 2.5%. So we have to look at each individual person and project which is greater. We also have salary increases for teachers, instructional staff, school administrators, 2.5% increase for central office staff. Also, the state budget passed um, raises for all employee groups, but as it was stated earlier, the state only provides funding for those employees that are paid with state dollars. So any of our locally paid staff, which for us includes facility maintenance, school office staff, locally paid assistant principals, 
We must come up with the funding in our local current expense budget to pay those salary increases and those benefit increases. So as Wendy noted, the hold harmless provision that was in the fiscal year 22 budget is no longer in the fiscal year 23 budget. So we will receive lower state funding because we will be adjusted from an average daily membership of 13,205 students to 12,644. So next, let's look at the next slide that is revenue adjustments. These are the adjustments that we made to our sources of income in our local current expense budget. Sales tax revenue projection was increased based on our current year receipts. We did have a slight decrease in our projected impact aid revenue due to the lower student enrollment again. We have increased our indirect cost revenue projection because we are having increased federal dollars coming in, so we are getting greater uh, revenues and in indirect costs from that. Um, we also have increased our request to Craven County Government to fund the local salary and benefit increases for fiscal year 23. We have decreased our interest earnings as we've seen quite a decline in our earnings for the current fiscal year. And we increased our fund balance appropriation to $2,032,864, up from $1.4 million last fiscal year. Okay. On the next slide, I think, did we skip one? No, this is about our fund balance. Um, I wanted to again provide you some information regarding the ways that we've used our fund balance in the current fiscal year. Again, as Wendy said, to be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars, we are looking for ways that we can use our current fund balance to help with some of the needs within the school system. So this current year, we sold our old iPads to purchase new teacher laptops. We took the proceeds from that sale, which was roughly $700,000, and we allocated from our fund balance $650,000 to buy new teacher laptops. Uh, we also used $258,144 to cover the fiscal year 22 salary and benefit increases. We used $2,015,000 for the Golden Leaf Generator Project. Um, I know that there is still work being done on that and the cost there, so that may be fluctuating slightly in amount. Um, and then again, we are appropriating the $2,032,864 of fund balance for the fiscal year 2023 budget. Okay. Next slide is our expenditure adjustments. So these are things that we had to look at closely in our local current expenses. Um, and obviously the, the biggest one is the increased salary and benefits for all of our locally paid staff. We also increased our local matching funds because we have a school resource officer grant that is through the state. And so anytime we add a new school resource officer, we have to add the matching funds for that school resource officer. Um, so we're adding a position at Aspire. So we increased that expenditure category for those local matching funds. We increased our property insurance um, expenditures by 2% because historically we've seen two to 3% per year um, on, our, on our policies. And we've also increased our utilities budget for telephone, waste management, and fuel costs because all of those costs are increasing. All of our other budgets have been held basically at the same amounts as the current fiscal year. Those were the main items that we had to address. And finally, um, the last slide is a summary of our planned capital outlay expenditures for fiscal year 2023. The detailed listing of the capital outlay projects is provided for you on page 36 of the budget request book. But the projects this year include some of the following. There is fencing work, paving, and power washing at various school locations. There is the purchase of a new forklift and a new vehicle for our facility support services. There are HVAC repairs included. There are updates to the Performing Arts Center at Grover C. Fields Middle School, updates to the Culinary Kitchen at Newburn High School, a new school sign for Vanceboro Farm Life Elementary, upgrade lighting at West Craven High School, intercom replacements at multiple locations, matching funds for the Department of Justice grant that Dr. Miller mentioned earlier, and the iPad lease payment for year two of the four. Okay, so in summary, 
We are requesting an increase in our local county appropriations for our local current expense fund of an additional 300,000, which makes our total local current expense request $22,264,991. And we are requesting an increase in our capital outlay expense of $44,453, which makes our total capital request $2,002,453. I think that's all I have unless you have questions for me. All right, commissioners, are there any questions? Commissioner Lina. I don't want to steal your sister. Aspire is our alternative, not alternative, what is the correct terminology? It's for our exceptional needs students who, due to challenges, are not able to function successfully in the regular school situation. Well, where are they at that they need an SRO? They are the campus in a separate building on the campus of Grover C. Fields. Separate so we got area. two we got two SROs at Grover C. Fields then is what you're saying. We have one at Grover and one at the spot on the same campus. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, can I have y'all has that been discussed with the sheriff? Do you know? Are you planning on asking the county to cover it? Yes, discussions have been had with Sheriff Peterson. Okay, because he's not included that in his budget. So that'd be something we'd have to talk about okay. all right Commissioner Mitchell and just a question about terminology um, under the celebrations you mentioned Newburn High School being national demonstration site site for AVID and then you talked about Vanceboro Farm Life applied for lighthouse status and I apologize I don't know what either of those are my mistake we often use acronyms so AVID is really it's a, a program to prepare students for college okay and and that starts as early as middle school but um, Newburn High School is going to be a site where other schools can come and see um, how when it's done well how the students it can prepare them for college um, the lighthouse status it, it's based around Covey's habits and it's based on the students win-win um, leadership in schools and they have to show um, there's a checklist they have to show that they're training tomorrow's leaders in their school today, community service, how to be a supportive colleague, all at an elementary school level, and the top of the um, ranking would be lighthouse status. Thank you. That explain that? Yes, ma'am, it sure does. I do have a thank you, while you're thinking of questions, if it's okay, um, I would like to thank the board on the last slide. I, I didn't want it to get by without thanking the, the commissioners for what they've done for us in the past, such as supporting a 10% teacher supplement. Um, several years ago, it was 2,300 flat, whether you had been teaching one year or 30 years. Now it's a percent, 10% of their salary, and that's been a great retention tool for our teachers. That puts us the second highest in the Southeast region, so I wanted to publicly thank the commissioners for that. Also, assisting with the iPad lease for secondary students. This was a game changer when we, one day we were in and then the next day we were home for COVID. I think that's why we got some of the results were with meeting and exceeding growth is because of the support of the iPad lease. Um, supporting local paid employees to ensure we remain competitive in Craven County Schools. And for your partnership and investment in our school system overall. We know families consider educational opportunities when they decide where to live. And we all want our community strong, and that begins with our public school system. So I publicly wanted to thank the commissioners for your support in the past. Thank you for the acknowledgement. We thank you. All right, other questions? Commissioner Booker. Yeah, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. And this is more for the people who may be watching at home. Uh, Quickly, you mentioned we now have SROs in every school. I would say that probably 90% of the people in our community have no idea what that acronym means. I don't like acronyms. You heard that the other day. <laughs> um, what we're saying is we have a deputy, a, a police officer in every school. A school resource officer that's trained specifically to provide, um, as you say, they're a police officer. But they really do a great job. Um, Chip Hughes does a great job of finding just the right fit because not everybody is able to do that with, you know, be a police officer and balance that in the elementary school. We're trying to build that partnership that that um, police officers are, are there to support you as well. So you're correct. That's a school resource officer. And I think it's really uh, critical that particularly in some of the schools, maybe with the uh, lower income kids, maybe 
uh, single family kids, boys, uh, to, that they can have a uh, relationship if it's a man in the, as the officer, most of them are, um, that if they can have a relationship with that officer, um, I think it goes a long way toward eliminating problems in the future. So it, it's, not a, it's not just to take care of a problem that shows up, but maybe it's mentoring as well. It is a proactive solution because we say to our st students, if you see something, say something. And that's the person they know they can report and get help. And I think it's been a way to prevent many um, situations that could have been much more serious if not had a school resource officer. And now all of our schools have a resource officer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Smith. I noticed in your conversation you spoke to the use of computers. We are now... Uh, in the process of looking at getting broadband throughout the county, you did not express a need for that. How can you speak to well, how that will affect the school? And uh, absolutely, that should have gone, Miss B. Thanks for catching that on my challenges, because um, during COVID, we became more aware than ever there are parts of our county that students struggled to log on, students struggled to stay connected. So that certainly would help the school system and our students and families. As you heard, um, the community college, more of our students are choosing virtual options. So that's certainly gonna limit students who, who don't have good internet. So we appreciate that, and that will be very beneficial to our students and families and our school district. Thank you. Other questions, comments? If I may say, uh, just on, as chairman of the board, commissioners, I want to thank you uh, as our superintendent and uh, chair lady Boomer for your accessibility to myself and the county manager. Um, we, for the citizens uh, that may not know, we meet on a monthly basis and um, uh, have great discussions. Uh, Y'all can keep us up to date on things, and we appreciate that, and we try to do the same of, of issues that would affect uh, Craven County Schools and our, our students. And um, and then on the other side, I just want to thank you as a, a farmer. I want to thank you for uh, Craven County Schools uh, advocating for the uh, farm to table uh, week that we have. Um, that means a lot. I've been able to participate that in that in the last two years. And um, and and coming from the rural part of the county, you, you sometimes think that everyone knows about agriculture, but then when you go to other areas of the county um, to to see. Um, the knowledge is not as, as, as much as it is in the rural part. Um, to, to bring that uh, knowledge, to bring what we do every day um, on the farm to the children so they can see it, I, I just say thank you for that. And, uh, appreciate the cooperation and collaboration of yourself, your staff, and the Board of Education with the Board of Commissioners. So. Thank you so much. All right. If no other questions, we thank you uh, for your attendance, for all those that are here in attendance. We're going to take about a five-minute recess if we can, and we'll come back. All right, commissioners, we'll come back to order. Next items of business are under departmental matters. The first item under departmental matters is planning a subdivision for approval. Mr. Don Bumgarner. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Oh, <clears throat> we are here this evening to uh, present a project to the board that was approved by the planning board on March the 24th and recommended uh, at that particular time from the recommendation from the planning board was for the subdivision to be approved. Mm -hmm. Name of the subdivision is called Bay Colony Holdings, LLC. The property is owned by Bay Colony Holdings and surveyed by Stroud Engineering. It's located in Township 5 off Temples Point Road. It contains three lots on approximately 13 acres of property and the lots are to be served by Craven County Water and individual septic systems. In order for this project to move forward, a vote to approve the subdivision would be needed. Okay, before we uh, entertain a motion, are there any questions? Uh, of course, Don, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's in my township on Temple Point Road. Is that down by the water? Yes, sir. Right on the water. Right on the water. It is right on the water on the water itself yes sir yeah. it close by the um the, the house for weddings in the area yes that that property is located uh before right before you get to this property site it will be on the left 
Inside the road. And Jet Temple. This is, yes, and this is just beyond that. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions? Commissioner Smith. Yes. I'm assuming this is the property that we spoke about earlier. Is this the one we spoke about? The And I asked about the, the width of the roads and if they no. met state standards. Uh, I think no, this is that, a different. Th yeah, this, this would this be a different, different one. It is. Yes. And I'm going to ask that question of this one. Okay. This particular road, they are proposing to have a 50-foot non-improved uh, right of way mm -hmm. that can serve no more than four residential lots. Okay, does that make, meet, meet standards? Yes, ma'am. It Thank does you. meet our standards. Yeah. yeah. But it will be a private road? Yes, it will be designated as a private road. Commissioner but, Lyon, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Smith. But it could qualify if they, if the time comes, it need to be turned over to the state. It is wide enough to, for, to accommodate that. Yes, they would. Uh, someone would have to make improvements to the road, including pavement. And I understand. Then there would have to be the proper number of homes, which would be four homes, and then they could petition the state to take it for addition. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Lino. Don, so what I'm hearing you're saying, you're looking to subdivide this into three lots, and then you're going to come back to us later that's going to subdivide those lots in the individual lots. Is that correct? Well, they they would be required to have a disclosure that would say they can't subdivide the lots any further until someone comes in and starts with road improvements. In this particular case, they could come in and build what we call a semi-improved road. We have a non-improved private street for four lots. And then the next scenario would be from four to eight, they have to build a road to state standards, except they don't have to pave it. And when they get beyond the eighth lot, then the road has to be paved. So in this particular instance, there would be disclosure to let them know that they can't further subdivide this property because it is a private road until the road is improved. Okay, what I'm getting at though, this is a lot of water frontage. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get in the same situation we are under Florence where we've lost a lot of that property and stuff down there and then we felt like we were responsible to put it back. Are we going to have any way to make sure we've got a proper enough setback that those houses are not built right there on those cliffs or those that water landing? A lot of that area down there, we do have provisions in our subdivision ordinance that require you to set back from the water's edge in order to try to prevent erosion from occurring. But, you know, that is something that uh, erosion can be pretty severe at times. And uh, I think what our provision is is a total of 100 feet from the edge. 75? 75 from the edge of the bank. I think I proposed 100 and the board wanted to go with 75. So what we will have is a 75 foot provision that they cannot build or do anything within that uh, area from the top of the bank along there. I just think when time comes, when it comes back before this board, we take a closer look at this. Yeah, so Don. It's going to be a problem. When they put a property that's 70 feet from the water line back S when mm -hmm. they can build. Mm -hmm. And also, too, with that um, land interfere with the people on the other land, with the, the, the wedding area? No. It wouldn't have anything. You know, they had a big conflict before. Right. There's been n uh, numerous conflicts down there before, but this, this piece of property would have nothing to do with the wedding venue. It's a separate driveway. Mm -hmm. with mm -hmm joint use with that facility at all. I think, Mr. Chairman, uh, sometime with the next month or so, we need to go down there and look at the property. Make sure. You understand. Make sure. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, if you, uh, if, if this board passes it tonight, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a go. I mean, it, it, the, but it's only a go for three houses. Three. And, and there were some problems with the health department being able to permit, um, you know, larger numbers of lots in there due to the soil <coughs> conditions that were present. The separation from the body, open bodies of water that exist in there, uh, any wetland areas that are adjacent to the site. So they 
particular point in time, I believe under the current standards, that's about as much as they're going to be able to get in there. Mr. Chairman, that, Don, that was what I was going to ask you. Sometimes in this area of the county, what we've seen is larger lots like this because they've had trouble placing the septic system, right? There's very right. little land that qualifies and has the right dynamics for one. I was going to ask you if that was the case, but I think you just confirmed it. So yes. further subdivision either means you've got to find more land that's suitable or you've got to do off-site, which in this instance, I, I mean, it's a long way to basically find an off-site site from the way these lots are oriented. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure that was... Uh, uh, if you will, uh, Commissioner uh, Smith was right ahead of you. Uh, my question stems from, from Mr. Lina's statement, and that is, he said that when a hurricane comes, we feel responsible to build the, the property back up. Is that not what you said? Well, we went in with grants, and mm -hmm. the federal government came back when we put the, the, the walls retaining yes. walls back in that we well, lost. But if it's, if it's private property rather than state, are we responsible for doing that? No, this, this was a part of a recovery program, uh, what Mr. Liner was referring to. This is part of what they call an EWP program, which is funded at the federal level to this situations where you have severe erosion and there is properties that are threatened from mm -hmm. being uh, totally destroyed or falling into the river. So that would not be a cost to the county, is that correct? And, and that was not any cost to the county other than when these particular lots were damaged, the value of those properties had to be adjusted accordingly. So sure. there was a loss, but there was I understand. And we were fortunate enough to help uh, you know over 50 some properties and we were able to do a lot of restoration and we, we couldn't do hardened structures uh, some people built back their bulkheads or put in mm -hmm. uh, some type of rock uh, area and then the soil behind it was brought in and put on a different grade than what it was before and in some instances they brought in sand sandbags filled them up and then regraded the property to try to stabilize the area that was impacted. Okay. So it was it was quite devastating to see the damage that was done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any one more problem, uh, uh, question. Uh, Don, would that be a uh, if we did this until next meeting or you have to vote on tonight? Um I, I, I would like to look at it that properly and be sure that sure. Uh, it's really anything. Yeah. I think they they've been working on this how Donnie about six months or more trying to okay they've been working on this for quite some time there and I, and I can't really say what they are or aren't going to do do you have any idea Donnie I think he's just living there um, one of the losses is going to be his I think another loss is going to be one of his friends okay so that that would be up to the the board to make that decision. We don't know of anything that is a <sighs> big push at this particular. I imagine what do you think, sir. I mean, it's it's you, you, everybody brings up good points. Um, I think with the challenges for, for future development on this property, um, you know, you're probably at the critical mass of what can go there. It's the board's call, though. I certainly understand the points. I think Don, they they followed and met all the criteria set by the subdivision ordinance. Right. Mm -hmm. So. That's what we've been working with them on on for about a year or more. Okay. Okay. Wait, do you want I'm to proceed, or you want to? Ask no, them? we we vote on it. All right, Commissioner Mitchell. I just had one question. Um, with this particular road, is that going to be sufficient for emergency vehicles or school buses or? Traditionally, these roads are. 50 foot in width on a piece of paper, and then they are not actually built to any standards as far as for public service types of uh, needs. Now, you know, a lot of times, um, a lot of times they do go through the process of trying to make it large enough for some, you know, an ambulance or possibly a fire truck, but, but not your types of fire truck you have in a city setting. They right. would have to be more of a truck that could traverse and access in those particular areas. Okay. But I guess school that's bus, the rest. School they bus wouldn't typically go on. Those. No, no, uh, school bus, no kids down there have to come out. Right. right. Okay. And I guess that's the risk they choose to assume um, for emergency equipment. Right. It's like a private drive, basically. Uh, they can 
make a lot of improvements if they want, well, or if they if it's emergency they anyway, want, they can do that. Go down there. All right, okay. that's uh, it. Any other questions, comments from the board? All right, what's the desire of the board? Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the subdivision uh, Bay, Bay Colony Holdings LLC. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Commissioners, um, if we can, I'd like to uh, hold on before we move to item seven. We're very honored tonight to have with us uh, North Carolina State Treasurer, Mr. Dale Falwell. And, um, sir, if you will, come to the podium. We welcome you um, to the people's meeting here at the Board of Commissioners this evening. And uh, this afternoon, um, he presented uh, the citizens of Craven County some money, and he might want to talk about that a little <laughs> bit while he's here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll only take a few minutes, and I'm, I like Mr. Liner already. He's got four squares, four square meals a day, and that's the nab sitting on his desk. And uh, the kind of day I've had, I haven't had my four square nabs today. So uh, thank you for having me. Just very briefly, uh, it's great to be in Craven County today. Uh, you know, thank you for the transparency and the governance that you uh, bring to this community. Uh, I can tell you that there's a lot of real estate that I covered between Winston-Salem and here today. Uh, that does not have the transparency that, and the governance that you have here. So uh, congratulations and thank you for being a good role model for us. Uh, just uh, two quick things. I mentioned this earlier today. Uh, as the state treasurer, one of my 21 days is, uh, is to look after the pension plan for those that teach, protect, and serve, not just at the state level but the local level. <coughs> uh, the plan is uh, about $118 billion right now. It's one of the best funded plans in the in the world. Uh, we're down about 7% this year, <coughs> which is remarkable uh, given what is happening to everyone else in the bond market and the stock market. So uh, I report that to you by standing on the shoulders, just like you do in this commission on the hardworking people that actually do the work uh, back at the Treasurer's Office. So for all of you uh, public servants who work for the County of Craven who teach, protect, and serve, worrying about the safety and security of their pension plan shouldn't be one of them. Uh, and secondly, <clears throat> we have just uh, completed our last uh, bit of refinancing. Uh, this was uh, actually several months ago. But we just certified our debt affordability study, and our debt affordability study shows that the state debt is going to fall 60 percent in eight years, and five of those years are already behind us. So, and I've already announced pre-refunded or, or called in the other three years. <clears throat> 60 percent decline in state debt. And then lastly, three weeks ago, we were just uh, uh, assigned the number two slot in the country as far as our competitive rating. And uh, our competitive rating has to do with the regulatory and business environment for business who are thinking about expanding or relocating into North Carolina. Other good news. Uh, we all know how well Craven County is doing, how well the torso of our state's doing through Charlotte, trying on Triad. But I can tell you, as the chair of the local government commission, we have a tremendous amount of stress in many parts of North Carolina, uh, what I call the legs, the arms, the toes, and the fingers of our state. And uh, so we're doing a lot of work there. Uh, lastly, uh, we are in the process of dechartering East Larnberg. It's our first decharter. Uh, East Larnberg has not consistently produced an audit in 10 years. Uh, the state auditor went in and showed that there were checks written off the petty cash account. Do you have a petty cash account in Craven County? Didn't think so. <laughs> they didn't either. <laughs> it was made out to petty cash. And the person who signed the front of the check was related to the person that signed the back of the check. Wow. Mm. We've been hearing a lot about Spring Lake, North Carolina. Uh, you know, when you talk about these cities, there's a heck of a lot of towns in North Carolina that have spring and lake in them. You've got to make sure you don't get it confused. Somebody could get their feelings hurt. Uh, spring Lake, the state altar, uh, just went in. And by the way, when I'm the calm one in the room, Somebody's having a bad day. So me and the state altar in the same room, and I'm the calm one. Somebody's having a bad day. And those of you who state know exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> uh, the state altar went in East Little uh, Spring Lake and found a half a million dollars worth of money has been embezzled from Spring Lake. Wow. Over a hundred thousand dollars made checks made out to a nursing home of the relative of the person that signed the check, and they even put the room number on the check. Uh, and there's 35 vehicles missing in Spring Lake. Now, I think the city manager, I mean, the county manager would say 
I didn't have 35 city vehicles <laughs> counting in Spring Lake. There's 35 <laughs> missing at 170 vehicles in the little town of Spring Lake. If you don't know where this is geographically, it's right between Fort Bragg, Fayetteville, and Pinehurst. There's no geographical reason they shouldn't be doing well. And lastly, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, thank you, uh, nccash.com. Uh, this is uh, $9,000 that came back to your convention center. Uh, I was at 919 Gregory Avenue uh, with the uh, Christian Outreach Group. They got $1,900 today. Uh, we just did a thing with Frank Ferboni at ABC News. I, he had $20 in nccash.com. Mm -hmm. There's about four people in this room, and I don't even know you, have money at nccash.com. <laughs> go there and check your name, maiden name, Why? kids. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you want to bet a pack of nabs on it? Yes. <laughs> I've been nabs in it. <laughs> when? When? Now. You went in when? No, oh, no, no, oh today. I'm just talking about okay. it. Anyway. Uh, so thank you for having me. Appreciate your hospitality, and and uh, I just w want to let you know that there are people in this state who live closer to five other state capitals than they do their own. There are parts of North Carolina. If you put five people in a car and sent them all to the closest nearest state capital, the last one to get to a state capital would be the person coming to Raleigh. Then get to the Georgia capital first, the Tennessee mm -hmm. capital first, Alabama, Kentucky, and West Virginia before they get here to Raleigh. So me having an opportunity to bring Raleigh to you today, I very much appreciate it, mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Falwell, as you know, uh, State Auditor Beth Wood, she's from my hometown of Cove City. Um, uh, actually, her first cousin married my second cousin. So uh, <laughs> uh, make sure you tell Miss Wood we said hello from Craven County. And, uh, so. I need to be a before I I stutter, so I need to make sure I get further enough away from her before I say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> make sure it comes out wrong. But, uh, no, she's a she's a we we have a great working relationship. We're both trying to cut the cost of health care, which I'm sure you're doing as a county and. And uh, I had a reminder the other day, you know, she's, she's, uh, she's got on Sheriff Bizzle a little bit up in Johnston County about some car. I said, you know, I, I heard you like to shag. You know, she's a world champion shagger, right? She said, yeah. And I said, now, can you get to any of them shagging places without going through Johnston County? <laughs> said, well, now that you think of it, I can't. I said, well, I think you ought to behave when you go through Johnston County. <laughs> so anyway, I've taken up more of your time, but uh, in Cash.com, thank you for what you do, and uh, we always look forward to working with Craven County. Appreciate you taking your time to be here, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. that. Yep. Have a safe trip home. All right, next, commissioners, we have item seven, which is the uh, facilities approval of the CARTS building project and related project ordinance and budget amendment. Mr. Gene Hodges. Good evening, sir. You need some time, sir. You need some time. Sir. Good evening, board. I've never been accused of traveling light, so I got my whole team here with me. And uh, follow on what uh, Treasurer Falwell said, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. Um, during the deliberations for the FY21-22 Craven County budget, the Board of County Commissioners directed staff to explore the construction of a new building and parking facility to relocate the carts, offices, and vehicles. Staff began working with the design team at Oakley Collier Architects, uh, as we colloquially call them OCA, which I got the design here and a preliminary design and project estimate was presented to the board of commissioners at the october 2021 work session at that time the board directed staff to proceed with the bidding process a request for proposals was issued on march 9th a pre-bid meeting was held on march 23rd and bids were due and publicly opened on april 7th five firms submitted bids and the bids ranged from one million three hundred forty two thousand dollars to one million six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. The official bid tabulation is shown in attachment number seven. The low bidder is Waters Contracting Company. Craven County has experience with Waters Contracting and the principal owner, Malcolm Waters. Mr. Waters was the primary contact related to the construction of the adult primary clinic at the health department in Newburn and the inclusive playground located at Creekside Park. Additionally, they function as a subcontractor with Barnhill uh, Contracting, Barnhill Contracting on the courthouse rebuild project and have also done numerous small construction projects for the maintenance department. Mm -hmm. Currently, Waters Contractor is the contractor that is building the 340B pharmacy inside the health department. Also included in the attachment is a project ordinance and budget amendment that have been prepared in the amount of $1,870,000. Mm -hmm. 
includes the following cost, $1,342,000 for construction, $165,551 for engineering, $123,265 for furniture, fixtures, and equipment, $101,000 for other construction, $138,184 for contingency. Staff recommends the board approve the project ordinance and budget amendment and authorize staff to contract with Borders Contracting for construction of a Carts Administration and parking facility next to the Judicial Center on Clarks Road. Staff and the design team are available if there's any questions. All right, questions for staff, commissioners? All right, I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve uh, the project ordinance and related budget amendments in the amount of $1,850,000. And then you see the rest of the uh, board action that would go with that. Is there any discussion on the motion? One, one quick yes, sir. What kind of time frame are we talking about here to a to start and to complete? Uh, yes. Uh, once we get all the contracts signed, we're going to give them some time to procure materials because we don't want to have started and then like we're waiting for whatever widget it might be. Um, the estimate is, is that we anticipate being moving carts in sometime around February to May of next year, depending on time. A year. A year, roughly. Uh, Mr. County Manager, do you mind um, just reminding us of where these funds will come yes, from and how they will be paid back? Yes, sir. So we're funding this project out of our capital reserve account which is money that the board's already put away for capital projects such as this. But the good news about this project is, is Ms. Walker has the ability to pay rent. So she works that into her variety of different grants that she has. She pays rent to the county. And Mr. Hodges in... We're anticipating a 20-year payback. 20 years will be paid back for the facility. Okay. But so that doesn't stop the rent payments. They would still continue to rent from us. But we're borrowing no money for the issue. You're not borrowing any money, sir. Commissioner Mitchell. I have a question. I'm looking at the budget amendment, and we're talking um, 1.87, but then when I look at the total, it's 3.74. Yes, ma'am. Can yeah. I take that? May I take yeah. it, Gene? Yeah. So what you got to do is you got to show it twice because you're taking it out of capital reserve, putting it into the general fund, okay. then applying it, transferring it over there into the variety of different accounts. So it's an accounting thing, but you're only spending 1.87. Thank you. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Very it's confusing, good. but it's the way accounts want us to do it. Okay, got it. I'm looking at the, the offices, and it seems like you can only get a table and two chairs in there. You see? In the so, floor? So, Commissioner Smith, those are... Yes, ma'am. Those are normal offices for what I would consider somebody does administrative work. I think if you look at Ms. Walker's office, uh, the director, or that also says director in the back would be the assistant director. So when uh, Oakley Collier did a space needs analysis, there's a uniformed allowance for an administrative office and this should meet the needs. This building is very similar, albeit a little bit larger than our Parks and Rec building. So if you visit that near the ribbon cutting, they're, they're not huge offices, but they're adequate once you get everything in there. Ms. Hodge, I don't want to jump in on that. You got it. It's a lot better than what they got. That's why I said, they look at her office when I went to her office. All right, other questions Terrible. on the board. <laughs> All right, if you're no additional discussion, Madam yes, Clerk, if you will, please call the roll. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Vice Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate all of you being Good here work. this evening. Good work. All right. Next matter is economic development, the project Bluefin Grant Agreement. Mr. Yeah, Jeff Wood. Welcome back. Evening, commissioners, again. Um, project Bluefin is a uh, local manufacturer, White River Marine, uh, who announced plans to invest $34 million in real estate, machine and equipment. Uh, <coughs> the existing facility, which is the Hatteras facility, and create and maintain over 500 jobs in five years. To assist in this investment, the Craven County Board of, uh, Board of Commissioners will provide a jobs performance grant of $600,000 over five years. Uh, your, the grant uh, draft is in attachment eight, uh, and it coincides with uh, the grant that was offered, uh, the jobs development investment grant that was offered by the state of North Carolina uh, that the governor announced last year at the announcement. Uh, I, was, I was fortunate enough last week to go visit White River Marine, um, and uh, we have a few statistics that are up there. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. are, are missing, but you got you guys have a, a copy of this as well. Let me run through this real quick. When they took over last year, they had 188 employees. They're already up to 350 employees. Um, they uh, they believe that they can reach the 500 jobs uh, within that five-year time frame. I mean, they're already largely there. Um, they are already, if you remember, during the announcement, uh, uh, Mr. Morris said that they would not only build Hatteras's there, but they would build Mako and Ranger brands. Uh, they have been building or shipping out between five and ten of those two brands uh, daily, uh, which is the, the uh, operation production level that they wanted to reach, so they've already reached that goal. Um, they relaunched the Hatteras brand last fall, and they've already sold five Hatteras yachts, and they've spent about two million dollars already <coughs> on mainly uh, uh, upfitting of equipment, uh, and, and things that they would need as far as a production level. If you remember during their announcement, they, they anticipate completely redesigning that facility and its facade. So they, they really concentrated on the job retention and creation part first. They built a strong base for that on the production level. Uh, I have talked to their facilities folks, um, and they do anticipate ramping up those, those investments um, over the next six to 12 months. So uh, overall, definitely a positive experience working with White River Marine, Lauren Good, uh, a new Craven Countyan uh, that was brought here from Missouri. He's extremely happy. I uh, talked to uh, the Vice President of Events, uh, Kara Davis, uh, la Davison last week, uh, and she said her only frustration is that people from Springfield continue to try to move here, <laughs> which is their problem, not ours. So uh, I, I, I'm excited to bring this to you. Again, this is in draft form, so the request is is that uh, the authorization to go into this grant agreement with the details uh, to be uh, finalized between legal uh, and uh, administration. So moved. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? The motion is to approve the authorization of Craven County to enter into a grant agreement with Project Blue Fin. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Madam Clerk, if you will, please call the roll on this. Commissioner McKay? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Vice Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Right. Item 9 is uh, appointments for pending, current, and upcoming. Commissioners, you say, see there your pending appointments. Does anyone have any nominations for any of those pending? Hear none, we will move to current. Uh, the first one is the Craven Aging Planning Board. You have an applicant and Jenny Butcher. Make a motion to approve. All right. We have the nomination of Jenny Butcher. Is there any other nominations? This is to fill the Havelock Senior Center seat. Here no other nominations. We will accept this by acclamation. Next would be the applicant Rob Payne would like to be appointed to fill the vacant 60-plus seat. Are there any nominations from the floor? Um, nomination. All right, we have a nomination for Mr. Payne. Are there any additional nominations? Here none, we were set. Right. Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, you have uh, Ms. Catherine Hanson, who would like to be appointed to fill this vacancy. Are there any nominations? I'd like to nominate Ms. Hanson. All right, we have a nomination. Are there any additional nominations? Here none, we will accept Ms. Hansen by acclamation. All right, commissioners, you see there the upcoming terms expiring in May and June. There's a long list of them, and then on to the next page. So please take note of those as we will be considering them. Can we, what are the Community College Board of Trustee applications on file? What are they? Yes, it says two are on, two applications are on file. Right, I'll, I mean, I'll provide them. Okay, before that. When they're considered, I was just making you aware that we do have, but I, there, I can get them to you Yes, ma'am, I appreciate that, please. Okay. Thank you. I'll make those available tomorrow. All right, thank you. All right, next is County Attorney's Report. Mr. Eric Grady. Good evening, sir. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, good evening. Take that off his bill, Steve. There you go. <laughs> um, I have several items for the board's consideration this morning, um, all of, or this evening. All of them involve uh, county-owned real estate acquired through the tax foreclosure. 
process. Uh, the first parcel, initial offer uh, with a parcel in Township 5. The parcel ID number is 5009031. The initial offer is in the amount of $1,200. The original taxes and cost of foreclosure were $3,067.01. The tax value of the property is $2,250. Um, of course, if the board uh, gives initial approval, we'll put it out for upset bids and it'll be back before the board for final approval after the uh, upset bid uh, process is concluded. Um, I do recommend that the board uh, give initial approval to this uh, sale this evening. All right, what's the desire of the board? So moved. Move. A motion and a second to adopt the resolution approving the transaction for partial number 5-009-031. Is there any discussion on the motion? No discussion. In favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right. Item B. The second uh, parcel is final approval after expiration of the upset bid period. This uh, parcel was uh, located at 1106 Broad Street here in New Bern. Uh, we do own this property jointly with the city of New Bern, which is already granted final approval. Uh, the initial offer was $5,400. Uh, that was advertised and put out for upset bids uh, with none being received. So $5,400 became the final bid. Refresh the board's recollection. The original past due taxes and cost of foreclosure were four thousand two four thousand six hundred twenty six dollars and two cents. A tax value of ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Um, I do recommend that the board consider giving final approval to this. <coughs> What's the desire of the board? So move. All right, we have a motion and a second. And this is to approve the conveyance on partial number eight dash zero one two. Dash A dash three two five. And is there any discussion on the motion? Here none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right, C. The next item is property at 2602 Newburn Avenue. This is also approval after the expiration uh, of the upset bid process. We do own this property jointly with the city of Newburn, which is already given. A final approval, the original bid amount was $2,500. Uh, after advertisement, there were no upset bids, uh, so the $2,500 is your final bid. The original taxes and cost of foreclosure uh, totaled $4,085.58. The tax value is $5,000. Uh, I recommend that the board uh, give final approval to this one as well. All right, what's the desire of the board? So moved. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the conveyance of partial number 8-037-066B. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right. D. The next item uh, is property located at 506 Dorst Avenue in the city of Newburn. We do also own this property jointly with the city which is given final approval uh, for uh, the sale. The original bid was $2,000. After advertising for upset bids, uh, the 2000 became the final bid. Um, the original taxes and cost of foreclosure were $3,727.43, and the tax value on this property uh, is $4,000 recommend the board consider giving uh, final approval to this one as well. All right, what's desire of the board? Make a motion approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the conveyance of partial number 8-008-072. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right, and E. Uh, last but not least, uh, this one is an initial offer on property located at 2502 Newburn Avenue, uh, located here in the city of Newburn. We do own this property jointly uh, with the city, which has already approved the initial offer in the amount of $5,000. 
Uh, the past due taxes and the cost of foreclosure uh, were $3,717.58. The tax value of the property is $5,000. If the board gives uh, preliminary approval this evening, we'll uh, put it out for upset bids. And once that process is concluded, we'll have it back before the board for final approval. Um, as with the others, I recommend that the board uh, give this one uh, approval. All right, so moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second uh, to authorize upset bid process for partial number 8-037-102. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. All right. Next, uh, commissioners, we have the petition of citizens under general topics. Mr. Vice Chair, did anyone sign up? No one did. All right. Uh, is anyone in attendance that may not have signed up that would like to speak to the Board of Commissioners this evening under general topics? All right. Hearing none, we will move to item 12, which is County Manager Report. Mr. Vice. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, appreciate the opportunity to present to you tonight. I've got three quick items I want to bring you up to speed on. As a reminder to the board, on June 14th is County Assembly Day in Raleigh. This is hosted by the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. There's some discussion tonight. We need to know probably in the next week or so whether you plan on attending. We do plan on scheduling appointments with our legislators, and there's typically a, a lunch there where we all get together and hear about uh, goals for counties going into the short session and further look into the next long session as we move forward. So, if you would, day again? June 14th. You would just let Nan know at your convenience whether or not that will. That's on a, you on a Tuesday. Okay, second. On June the 2nd, we're bringing something back. Um, we haven't done in a long time, and it's a county appreciation lunch at the convention center. It'll be from 11 to 2. We'd love to have the commissioners join us and participate as your schedule would allow. There will be a flyer in your box. I brought one here with me tonight. Um, but it's been long overdue to, to spend some time with our fellow employees and have the commissioners there and recognize them for their hard work over the last several years. So look forward to having that event uh, back again. And lastly, uh, end on a positive note, we did, uh, were able to get the roadside litter program back up and running in the month of March in partnership with the sheriff. I checked with Mr. Astor, our solid waste director, this morning. We've closed 15 cases of illegal dumping the last 45 days. We have eight pending cases uh, that he's following up on. And we have picked up hundreds of bags of trash on the side of the road all across this county in every commissioner district here. Um, and it's, it's making a difference. I was out uh, with Commissioner Booker on Friday looking at some areas in his district, and I could tell a difference. Uh, I think when, when we get out there with the inmates and we're making an effort, Folks tend to, to not litter as much. And I'll tell you, with the enforcement side, having a deputy involved with the program that's now following up and able to, to write some tickets and, and have some enforcement measures, it's, it's really turning around. So we look forward to continuing that program. I am still a bit disappointed that uh, we did have some money funded through our local uh, landfill, through Kraswama, to pick up trash with DOT. But contractors been unable to perform to this point and don't have a date when they will be able to perform. So more than likely, DOT will have to look at other avenues to get that program back up and running. So I'm here for questions if you have any. All right, Commissioner Mitchell. Um, yes, um, and thank you, Jack. Um, as I've been going door to door, I have had several constituents bring up the question of why don't we have do not litter signs around the county? And I'd never thought about that. Do we have them? Um, I've certainly seen them in other places. Um, but they pointed out that that's one thing we can do to remind people don't litter in this lovely place. Could we look into that and see if that is feasible, what it costs? Well, yes. if I may just address yes, it, not from the county purchasing it, but from DOT side. That's right. um, I met with a group in Rocky Run um, recently about mm -hmm. it with DOT and requesting um, the signs be put up along their roadways with the penalty added to right, it right right but uh, dot has said and this is their statement that they find that when they put them out there's more trash on the roads than there are when they don't have it mm -hmm. people are trying to hit the signs with trash um, they will not leave the signs up 
DOT will not leave them up but 30 days. But they do fluctuate one sign, I think, per county. And I think they're in your district right now. Hopefully they'll be in Rocky Run soon. And you can request that it be put up on certain roadways, but it will only stay up for a certain number of days. Now, that's through DOT. Now, if the county decided to do something different, uh, that would be different, but I reckon you would have to get permission from DOT, DOT. to put the signs up. So. Could we at least check into that? Because I've certainly seen them every place else I've ever lived. Mm -hmm. um, My only comment would be it's probably about as effective as a sign on a store that shows no weapons involved. That means the good people don't come in with weapons, but the bad guys do. Do anyway. And I don't think somebody who's just consumed a, a six-pack of beer is going to say, oh, Better not throw these out because you're not supposed to litter. I see that sign. So right. I'm not against it, but I really question how much value they have. Yeah. That's, just, that's I, just me. I don't know. I'd at least like to look into yeah. the, the cost involved with it and how difficult it would be because if other places have them out, I can't believe that they are all a waste of time everywhere. And, and please don't take my comments. No, sir, I don't. Against. I, I was a little bit surprised with DOT's response when, when we asked about that. I'll check into it. We'll see what we can find out. Well, if nothing else, if we could try it on a limited basis and see if it gets worse or gets better. Um, Other questions for the county manager? I, I think I have one. I have been questioned, and I had intended to speak to you earlier about that. It's about improving the recycling process. Do we have any angles that we might uh, look at? Yes, ma'am. Which, which particular part of it? They are saying that... Uh, Oftentimes, things, uh, so many things that are not recycled because of the process we use, not recyclable because of the process that we use. And uh, they're thinking that we should have a better process of recycling. That's a good question, and I often heard, okay? And the problem we have is we recycle all the materials that the processor will accept. So anything that they won't take and they won't process locally, we don't have an avenue to... Uh, process that item. Mm -hmm. So some things. So do we do, do, do are our recycling contracted out to a company? Yes, ma'am. So the way our, our recycling program works is we have a contract with GFL, and they collect all the materials and take them to their their facility, and then those materials are processed in Jacksonville, North Carolina, through a company called Sunoco, where they make a variety of different commodity bundles. Um, they're Certainly more recyclable products that are more valuable than others. In recent times, glass has been very difficult to process. There's really no value to it. It's more of a hindrance. It actually sort of costs you to recycle it. Of course, aluminum and steel and things that can be repurposed to products here. Um, but, you know, I would say over the last five years, the recycling market's really changed because so much of that used to go overseas, and I'm sure a lot of it still does. But the demand there and the willingness for those countries to take it's really dropped off. So it's, it's not as affordable as it used to be to have a recycling program. I think it's a fair way to say it. So the challenges we face is there's certain plastics um, that have a recyclable symbol on them. But the processor doesn't have a mechanism to get rid of them. So we can't accept them here because all they would do is simply throw them away anyway. So, but for the materials that we do accept, they are recycled at Sunoco in Jacksonville. Thank you. All right, other questions? All right, thank you, Jack. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next we have Commissioner's report. And um, Commissioner Mitchell, you want to go Nothing first? to report. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Liner. Yes, sir, I got two things to report. Uh, sorry to report, we lost a great American last week. Kevin Hines lost his battle with cancer. And I appreciate this board giving us the certificate that we did for him for his service of what he's done for this county and the Purple Heart Association and everything else. So it's going to be missed. Uh, last Wednesday, I attended the Tech Bridge meeting down in Havelock. Good showing, good number of people come out. And Jeff Woods and his people are to be commended on getting that started and getting it. There's a lot of interest and a lot of people came out for it. So it was a good show. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Smith. Not at this time, no. All right. Uh, <coughs> Commissioner McKay. Uh, George, I also attend the uh, 
Tink Bridge at the uh, Church Center also, but you already left when I got there. I just, uh, I think everybody got this, um, this text. I just want to remind everybody that um, Terry Sharp, uh, mother passed away Friday, April 29th. Uh, the service will be on Friday, May the 6th, at Greenleaf Memorial Park, Lakeside Chapel at 1 p.m. So please keep Terry and her family in your thoughts and prayers. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Commissioner McCabe. Vice Chair Booker. Uh, County Manager, uh, I mentioned uh, that we had a, a field trip last week. There were four, five, five or six of us that got in the van on Friday and went to James City, and we drove all the streets of James City, which there are quite a few, and we looked at all the properties and, and just going back, it was in the fall that we went out and identified 50, roughly? Ballpark. 50 properties where a, a building was unoccupied and in most cases, literally falling down. And some of these are right next door to some very nice, well-maintained properties. So we started the process in the fall. We contacted those folks by mail. Uh, a few of them responded. Uh, those who didn't respond, we contact them again, contacted them again early this year. Um, the attorney, uh, his office uh, wrote letters to them. We had a number of them uh, that responded. It was really encouraging to drive around and where we were two or three months ago, there was a, a house that was just a disaster and now we have just a graded lot. And there were more than a few of those, probably at least a half a dozen yeah. that we saw that, and I'm just really encouraged. Now we wanna keep the pedal to the metal and keep uh, the heat on those folks that have ignored us. So um, good news, good news for the folks in James City. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, the only item I have, Commissioners, is the County Manager talked about uh, County Assembly Day on June 14th, but also on June 14th at noon we have the Partners in Education annual luncheon at the Newburn Riverfront Convention Center. Mm. And um, a great day, big day planned, first time it's been in person in a few years, and uh, this is a, a big fundraiser for Partners in Education to support uh, our Craven County teachers. So. For those that may be listening that want to purchase a ticket, um, you can call Ms. Darlene at uh, Central Office, Darlene Brown, and or, or you can contact myself and be glad to get you a ticket. All right, Commissioners, anything else to bring before the board tonight? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, we stand adjourned.